Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test Tube Plus today. This is episode three of a five episode series about space travel. If you've never watched before, we cover one topic for five different episodes so we can get really into it and break it down for everybody, me included. Thanks for watching. So far we've talked about astronauts, we've talked about how they get their training, and we've talked about how we got to space in the first place. But today, we're gonna talk a little bit more, kind of a downer episode, something a little more dark. The dangers of space travel. Space travel is very dangerous. I mean, really dangerous. It's probably the most dangerous 62 mile trip that humans have ever tried to do. 62 miles, remember, is how far space is away from us, about 100 kilometers. Space is dangerous. Only three people have actually died in space, but there've only been a few hundred who've probably ever gone. Only three people have ever died in space, officially. They're all on the Soyuz 11, it was in 1971. It decoupled from a Russian space station, the first of its kind, named the Salyut 1. And when it decoupled, a valve opened, and the astronauts didn't really know what was going on. I guess they would be cosmonauts because they're Russian. And what happened is the air slowly leaked out of their capsule. When they were found on the ground, a recovery team found them, and they were all three dead. The only three people to ever officially die in space. And just because they were the only three to die in space doesn't mean they were the only three to die for the cause. Space travel is dangerous. It's very dangerous. There are dangers at every stage of space travel, from training to descent, launch, malfunctions, explosions, fires, decompression, spacesuit failures, parachute failures. And those are just the ones related to the rocket itself, not just the development of the rocket and the development of the propellant. I mean, that's crazy, right? Here are some examples. Apollo 1 is a very famous example. In 1967, they had uh, these astronauts inside of the cockpit, and a fire started because there was too much oxygen, as I recall, and it killed all three of the astronauts in the capsule. They couldn't get the door open. They redesigned the door before they got to Apollo 2, so that would never happen again. But those three men did lose their lives. The lunar landing training vehicle in 1968 had a crash. There was a disaster of rocket engine igniting prematurely on a launch pad. That killed 126 people. And that was just on the ground. This is before we've even launched the rocket. We're just trying to figure out how to launch the rockets. And we've already lost a lot of people. But even once we do figure out how to lift them off the ground and get them up into the air, there are still problems. Like, for example, the Challenger explosion in 1986. The fuel tank on the Challenger exploded because the O-ring was too cold, they determined, and that killed all seven of the astronauts aboard, six engineer NASA astronauts and one teacher. Uh, that almost is a great highlight for how complicated space travel is. The weather in Florida was colder than they thought it was going to be, and one of the O-rings, which sealed a tank, or kept what was in the tank inside the tank before it ran into the tube that it was connected to, cracked because it was too cold. And that little crack exploded and just lost the whole shuttle during launch. Just that one little thing. And a space shuttle has two and a half million moving parts. It's insane. There are also examples of in-space disasters. Apollo 13, very famously, there's a movie, but also you should check out the history. It's really cool. Um, an oxygen tank exploded, and they had to slingshot around the moon and get back home as if it were a lifeboat using the moon lander that they could now not use to land on the moon. The space station Mir had a fire in 1997. The astronauts were able to put that out, but fire suppression systems in space were advanced because of it. The Voskhod 2 in 1965, they had a spacewalk, but they couldn't get back into the space capsule because his suit malfunctioned. And of course, when you're in space, you just, when it malfunctioned in this way, it kind of ballooned. <laughs> so he just let some of the pressure out and opened the door, which is very lucky. 1971, Soyuz 11, another three men died. There's also re-entry problems. Being in space is tough. But coming back, that's actually one of the hardest parts. What happens is, as you're coming back into the Earth's atmosphere, the friction of all of the atoms of air that are hitting you heat up your spacecraft. That's why there are heat shields. Unfortunately, in, 19, or in 2003, sorry, uh, Columbia had a heat shield damage during launch by debris that had fallen and hit 
the heat shield on part of the wing of the shuttle. And when it was coming back in, even though they inspected it in space and they thought it would be okay, they tried to re-enter the atmosphere and they lost all seven of the astronauts on board when the Columbia exploded. It was terrible. And it was not the first time that the shuttle has exploded, but we'll come back to that in a minute. The Soyuz 1 in 1967 had a parachute failure. They got all the way to space, got all the way back. They attempted manual reentry, and parachute did not slow down the spacecraft and killed the one cosmonaut inside. So this is interesting to me because when you ask a member of the general public how dangerous space travel is, they're probably like, eh, you know, it's fine. They get up there, they come back. It's no big deal. But it's not safe, and it's not easy, and there are so many things that can go wrong, and so many people whose jobs it is who are working and putting their whole heart and soul into making these programs, these, these, these machines, push people further than they've ever been before. And this is one of those times where space companies can't hide because things go wrong. Look, America loves the space shuttle. I love the space shuttle. I visited many of them at the museums already, and as I've mentioned, I went to space camp. I am that kind of a nerdy guy, and yet they built six shuttles, and only five went to space, sorry, Enterprise, and two of them were lost. That's a huge failure rate. They were designed in the 1970s, and they were built in the 1980s, so even when they were still using them into the 2000s, they were using pretty old equipment. Even though it had been updated, it wasn't new. This was technology that was frozen in time, and I miss them, but I am glad that they're retired because we don't want to lose any more. It's time for new stuff. Space planes like Virgin Galactic. Of course, they lost a pilot and a plane in, in 2014. Private companies like SpaceX and Orbital Sciences, but they've also lost spacecraft with explosions and things. Look, guys, space is dangerous. And it's not just the rockets or the training or reentry or any of these things. It's also dangerous in another way, which we're gonna talk about tomorrow. So thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. Make sure that you subscribe so you get all of our videos every day. And why don't you tell us down in the comments what other dangers you can think of when it comes to space travel stuff I didn't mention. I'll be down there in the comments talking to you about it too. And if you want to hear all five episodes of Test Tube Plus smushed into one cool podcast, go to iTunes, type in Test Tube Plus. You should be able to find us pretty easily. And take a listen. You can you know listen while you're at the gym or driving in your car or on your commute or something. And also throw us a rating if you like it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow on Test Tube Plus.